Oh, very exciting. God, God is just good. He has a good family. Um, when you're part of the family of God, there, there's a fellowship there. As a matter of fact, I, I have relatives. Uh, believe that or not. No, just kidding. I, I have relatives that, you know, I love them dearly. And, you know, my uncles, aunts, whatever else. But I have to say that, you know, there's times if I'm going through a difficult time or whatever, there's nothing like the family of God. Because there is a depth there, a connection that happens there. You just sense the presence of God. And uh, so, yeah, I love my family. They're, they're good people and whatever. But I also have to say that, man, there's just something that happens in the spirit. When you, when you get to know, not just know about God, not just that you say, God, I need you to save me, but he puts out his spirit in your life. It's, there's, a, there's a connection in the spirit that happens that goes just another whole level. And so I'm, I'm so thankful for that. So, um, Jesus, I want to tell you thank you for being here. Thank you for touching us, God. I thank you that when we can offer our worship unto you, that you love it. You, you're attracted to that. Heaven pays attention. And even though we're so small, sometimes so weeny, God, yet, Lord, your power is so great and so mighty, and yet you pay attention and you care about our, our praise, our worship. And so thank you, Lord, because... You don't just make us feel important. We are important to you. We're created in your image. You love us. And you have good things you want to do for us. You want to pour out good gifts, God. So I pray, Lord, that you'd raise our faith through the service today, God. That through the word, our faith would rise to say, yes, Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And that, Lord, that we could walk in the paths that you, have to, that you want us to walk in. That we could see your kingdom happen. Your will be done through our lives. And for this, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, here we are. Turn your attention first to John chapter 15. And I'm almost thinking that maybe the last time I spoke, I might have even been in the same chapter. But I don't have the same notes. As you can see here, I don't have notes. Um, it's a blank sheet of paper. So I'm not preaching a sermon that I preached before in that sense. But John chapter 15 and verse 5 is where I like to start at. It says here, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Verse 6, let's throw that in too. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So, verse 6 says, if a man abide not, doesn't look good. But verse 5 said, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so if I had something I really felt like, uh, want to change mics? Good. I like this color better anyway. Um, the this, this scripture um, is letting us know here something right, right off. I think a lot of times, I don't know, maybe you don't have the same problems I do, but sometimes I look in my spiritual mirror and I go like, oof, does God really like that? You know, am I really measuring up? And, uh, you know, you feel like a little failure or something. And, and, uh, and, and so there's sometimes some difficulties. Oh, I have to change colors again. Okay. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, sometimes you feel like, um, I, I don't know if, uh, does anyone ever feel spiritually challenged? Like I'm not, you know, quite, um, like as much as I need to be. I, I see other people living for God and go like, wow, how do they do that? And I, it, like, it seems like it's more effort when I, when I, and that's probably the problem, when I'm trying to make it happen, man, it just seems so difficult God did not say, then I ask this, like, now you really try, you get out there and run your hardest, and if you, if you make the score, I'll, I'll approve. And if you don't run hard enough and you slack off, well, then kick you to the curb. And sometimes it feels that way. But that's, I think, the devil's philosophy of how to make things work. Because I don't make it because I worked hard. It's because my faith says, God, if you want to do this, you're welcome to use me. I'll, I'll cooperate. But you got to do it. I can't do it. 
Okay? That's number one. Yeah. And the second thing is, is that I can't ever, and here's, well, we'll get to that next, maybe in a minute here, but just to briefly say that sometimes when, um, when it does go well, and I did let God, you know, let my faith rise, and the Word of God imparted faith to me, and I go, whoa, look what God's doing. And you're just kind of like, wow, man, two points for me. Hmm. And, you know, I'm starting to feel good. And I said, well, I can take a little casual break here. You know, we, we got a little, um, it's kind of like the guy said, you know, I got a uh, big harvest here, and I'm going to build bigger barns. I got stuff stored up. I, I can just sit back now and take my ease, because look at my barns. They're all full. Ooh. I cannot afford to take vacations from God because I just feel like I got it together. Because if I don't, uh, and here's the word, abide. If I don't abide in Him daily. If I just do the daily part, piece of cake. If I think, oh, I got plenty stashed up here. I can just cruise for a little bit. I can just sit back. Man, shh, poof. Um, yeah. So, now you know where I'm going to preach about, right? Got that all together? Let's make some applications here. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him. So, abiding. Um, abiding. If, if uh, I'm trying to remember, did I see any fruit trees around here lately? Um, pick your tree, your favorite one, apple, whatever you want it to be. If I go out there and saw off a limb on that tree, and you look at the limb 10 seconds later, does it look real different? Did the leaves just all drop off? No, it still looks good. If it had an apple or two on it, it still has an apple or two on it. I go, yeah, see? And here's this limb, and we just set it all by itself, and there it is. And, and I can say, well, it doesn't look like anything's different about it, but is there something different about that limb? What's different? It's in the process of dying. It's dead. It, it may still have some sap still left in it from the roots before, yes. A little energy to go, but it's on its, its way out. It, it will soon wither. Uh, so the question to us spiritually is, if I'm plugged into God and God's doing good things, I've been filled with the Spirit and mm, feels good, I'm, it's great. I disconnect and says, I'm taking a vacation. Unplug. How long do I last? None of us, I don't care how good you are, what rate, all of us have the same situation. I only survive when I abide. I only survive when I abide. So it said here, he that abideth in me, and here's the good news now, he that abideth, so if I will daily get plugged in, I will daily say, God, where I'm at today, I'm connected into the vine, I'm, I'm you know, Feed me, Lord. I need that, that sap from your, your roots bringing up that good stuff. If I abide there, here's what his promise is. And this is what I think the Isaiah thing was. What does God want to do for my life? Well, what's, what's he promised me? What's there? He said, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth, how much? Much fruit. And is it me doing it? It says, no, it says, no, for without me you can do nothing. So it's not even me doing it. It's him doing it. I will bring forth much fruit if I just abide. If you don't get anything else from the message today, if you just abide in, the, in Him daily, I'm plugged into Him, you will bear much fruit. It may not happen in, in the, the winter season of spiritual life. Uh, in the springtime, you'll see stuff starting to grow, and you say, well, but is it ready to be picked? Yet? No, it'll have a season when fruit will come to its completeness and its maturity, but I cannot help but become what he wants me to become. The fruit will be there if I would just daily abide and not ever withdraw. Uh, a little story. Um, it's funny. I told a Yugoslavian story. Here's my second one. To, that was a personal one. Somebody else now. But um, I'm, So I'm visiting Yugoslavia back in the 70s. Communism is very strong. <laughs> Yugoslavia doesn't exist now as a country. It's all divided up differently. But um, I'm, I'm there, and I'm visiting some underground churches uh, that were there. And uh, man, it just seemed like the, there was just a spirit of heaviness. And it was like, mm, and whatever. And, and so I remember going home after, uh, to my friend's house afterwards where we're spending the night at. 
And I remember thinking, man, God, I'd like to see a, your power, your spirit move here. And, and, um, and I was kind of praying like, Lord, give this place a revival and we just need to fast, we just need to pray and whatever. And um, so I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some time right now to pray. And I started praying, I fell asleep. Like, Whoa, sorry, God, didn't mean to fall asleep. I thought, well, I'm going to, you know, I started get again. And boom, fell asleep again. Like, whoa. And it was just like a spirit of heaviness was there. And I remember saying, well, I'm going to, I'll read the word. And I went to read the word, and, and um, I picked the wrong spot. It was um, Song of Solomon's, and this weird stuff was going on. Like, this is not good. And I flipped a few more pages earlier, and, and David, and he's killing his thousands. I thought, that's your man. He kills people. I mean, that's, you know, like murder. And, like, and I'm like, this is confusing. And I remember my brain went, it was like, just, I'm thinking, like, this doesn't seem, I don't even understand the Bible anymore. And I'm in, you know, I graduated from Bible school. I'm in a mission field. I'm like struggling with the Word of God. And I thought, man, this is just really, and I didn't realize it was a spiritual attack. I was in a different spiritual zone. There were some weird, wacko spirits there. And man, I just, to, to pray just seemed like a, just exhausting my brain. My brain was hurting. Trying to read scriptures, blank, you know, no re spiritual revelation. I'm like, God help. And I fell asleep. And in my dream, um, I, I saw this big, nice, beautiful, I don't know, it was an oak tree. It looked like a big, strong tree, but it had fruit on it. And there was this giant tree, and right next to it was this little weeny sproutling just starting to grow. And I felt like I was that little weenie sproutling. And I'm looking like, wow, to be a Christian like that, to be you know, awesome, strong, to win. Someone could step on me and kill me as that little weenie thing. And I remember thinking, I just feel so weak. I feel so nothing. I'll, if I had some fruit like that tree has on me, it'd bend me over and I'd, I'd, I, I couldn't even bear it. Like, how do I become, you ever feel that way sometimes spiritually, you're just going like, man, I, pff, how am I ever going to arrive? And, and I guess my frustration I was feeling spiritually was kind of leaking into that, that dream I'm having. And I remember just thinking, there's no hope, man. I'll never make it. It's like, it's too hard. How do you get to be that big, man? I don't even know how you do that. Like, I'm just this little weenie and this thing is so huge. And just like, mm, kind of overwhelmed. And then all of a sudden, it was like a, a scripture just crashed right in. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. And it's just a time for this, a time for that. And, and it, it was like immediately when that scripture came, a measure of faith came. And I, I got a word from the Lord. just said, look, all that little seedling has to do is just, when it rains, suck up the rain. From the nutrients in the dirt just grow every day and that little seedling can't help but become a giant tree someday it will produce it's like it's in the dna of that little seed there that's just sprouting up it will become that giant tree it can't stop it it can't become a, a, a thorn bush or something it will become all it needs to be but all it has to do is take the sunshine that comes every day and take the rain and nutrients suck it up from the word and it will become if that little thing will abide in the soil, not fight what's going on, just abide, stay plugged in, don't get rooted up and say, I'm going to check my roots, see if I'm growing very much today. No, it'll, it'll kill it. Just abide. It can't help but become, and there was such a, I woke up crying from that little dream I had, just like, poof, and like a measure of faith came in where it seemed so impossible, like there's so many spirits, it's so heavy, it'll never be, how you ever get revival here? It just seemed like it never happened. It's all of a sudden it just changed in one moment. No, it will become because God's favor is there. It just has to abide. Okay? What I want you to realize today is sometimes the devil will come and mess with us and says, you're not going to make it. Oh, yeah, you're doing good today, but you just wait. Yeah. You didn't hear those voices? I hear those voices. But what God's word is, his promises. Does God lie, by the way? Did I actually read it right here what he says? He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. That's a promise. He doesn't lie. 
All I got to do is this one little thing, abide. I want to abide in him and he in me. If I get that part right, you will become exactly what God wants you to be. It may be beyond your wildest dreams. Matter of fact, uh, our pastor, Pastor Moon, used to say this all the time. He says, if you plan your own life, you'll severely underplan. What God wants to do is so much bigger than what you can imagine. You can't even begin to fathom it. Who would ever thought, you know? But if I would just say, God, so I'm leaning on you. I'm trusting you. This is your deal. You make it happen. If I would just relax and abide in him, he's going to bring it to pass. Okay? I want, I want this church to catch that real carefully. What God wants to do is way beyond what you can imagine. Way beyond. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He said, fear not, little flock. <laughs> Luke, he was telling me, he said, fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants to do this. He wants to bless you. He's made promises unto you. What you were reading there in the scripture, like, yes. It's exactly what God wants to do. So what are, what's, what's the challenge here? So number one, to realize that um, I have to abide in him, rule number one. Don't ever think I can skip today because I'm busy. And so I'm going to skip my prayer. No, don't skip any days. I want to buy. Could a husband tell his wife, honey, I'm glad we're married, but today I'm taking a day off from our marriage and I'm, I'm hanging out with somebody else? I'm not going to pay attention to you? I, yeah, I, that's not going to fly very good, folks. I can tell you that right now. I want to abide in Jesus Christ the same way. It's like I'm never off duty. I'm not taking a vacation from the presence of God. I can tell you exactly what's going to happen if I try that one. If I, it, it, that, and that's why I was mean enough to read the second verse too. It says, if a man abide not in me, there's a promise there too. He's cast forth as a branch and he's withered. Not that God's being mean. It's just that branches don't live without being plugged in. They wither. And what do people do with withered branches? They gather them, they cast them in the fire, and they're burned. So I, the world is proving over and over, don't abide in God, and I can show you what's going to happen. Can I do something my way and a fly? No. All right. Um, good news again. Let's go jump to Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. Promises from God, folks. Don't even have to sweat it. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of, scorn, of the scornful. You're blessed when you dodge these areas. I want to walk in God's counsel. I, I, I want to walk in... God's way. I want to sit in God's presence. And verse 2 said, but his light, if I'll put my delight in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night, so where am I at? I want to be plugged into him. I want him to be thinking, God, what's going to make your day today? Thank you for talking to me today. Man, thanks for our fellowship today. It, it's a daily thing. I don't skip any days. It's a relationship. Um, when I get that part right, Verse 3 promises, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So I'm gonna, it's not going to be any dry seasons. I'm by the river. It may not be raining today, but I still got groundwater I'm tapped into. And it says, uh, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. There it is again. Fruit will come as a result. His leaf also shall not wither. I, get, I wither when I'm cut off. But when I'm plugged in there, I'm planted by the rivers of water. Whatso, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Man, I like that, folks. So you say, I don't know how to do this. It's okay. All I need to do is just abide. It's up to him. He'll produce the fruit. Does that little tree know how to become a giant? How are you going to do that? It may not happen overnight, but it will grow. It will become. It can't help but become. It will prosper. The fruit will come. Because it just simply is taking up the days when you're getting nutrients out of the ground from the Word of God, the Word of God here. That's our, that's our sucking that up. Let the sun shine the days it needs the sun. 
turn your little leaves out there, turn that little chlorophyll to whatever those leaves do to make all those little things happen inside, and the tree will grow. It can't help but. Folks just need to abide. Um, one little more spot here is flip over to Joshua, chapter 24. And I appreciate Joshua because um, he wasn't trying to be a big shot. He, he always, he was faithful though to follow Moses. When, when everybody else was taking vacations and uh, worshiping other gods or whatever, Moses up in the mountain, uh, Joshua was standing right there. He was, his heart was turned towards the man of God, towards God's favor, God's laws. And, um, and, and so he now finds himself in position when Moses passes away. He's now leading the children of Israel. He leads them into the promised land. They see victory after victory because he's faithful. He's plugged in. He's doing what needs to be done. And, and so God's making it happen. It's not because that he was all buff and had lots of muscles and he could swing a sword better than everybody else. It was because of the fact that he just had a heart to follow the Lord, that he was being blessed. He was a leader. They saw great victories. And then at the end of his life, He's trying to pass it on to the next generation. And Joshua calls the people together, and he kind of reminds them, he says, now look, if, if I go back to the beginning of that chapter 24, he's basically saying, look, um, you know, a, the, the people before Abraham, your great super-grandfathers, they served other gods. Um, and, but the Lord, he brought you out of Egypt. He did great works. Um, when you cried out to him, he goes through this whole thing about how you did so many things uh, and, and the power of God. He says, look, the land that you've moved into, he says, the gods that were here before that these people worshipped here, he says, man, the hornets, God sent hornets and ran these people out of here for you. And, and he says, I've given you, in verse 13, he says, I gave you a land that you did not labor. I gave you cities you didn't build. I gave you all vineyards and olive gardens and you planted not eat. And he basically says, basically he brings them to this point of decision and um, he says, who do you want to serve now? In verse 15, he says, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord. Obviously it wasn't. But he says, no, you get your choice here. And this is one thing you have to realize. God will give you choices. And you have to decide, am I going to serve God today? Put him on pause and not serve God today. Uh, which one do I want to do here? He says, if, so if you think it's evil to serve God, um, then you choose who you want to serve. Do you want to serve the gods of these people that were here? Or do you want to serve the God that's been faithful to be bringing you out, who saved you, who's brought you through times? Was it always sweet? No, they had wilderness experiences. But he always gave them victory. They always overcame. There was no enemy that defeated them. There was always manna that came from heaven. There was always water that God provided. He, he met every need. And so he says, you choose this day who you want to serve, whether the gods which your father served, great-grandpas back in the day on the other side, the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, these people that we've just defeated here, you want to serve their gods? Their God didn't, couldn't whip them. You know, we whipped, their, we whipped them, and their God didn't show them how to do it. Uh, so he says, in his lands, as you, that you're dwelling in, but he asked this question. He basically made a statement for himself. He says, as for me, but as for me and my house, here's what we're going to do. We're going to serve the Lord. That's got to be our, our, our bottom line. When it comes to me, at my house. We're going to serve the Lord. How often? We're going to abide there. Never leaving. I don't want to go anywhere else. And again, the, just to make sure that no one gets an illusion, it's not to be to throw a cold water and to ruin it. Everybody's going to happy like, oh, wow, you know, I, man, God's on our side. We have victory. He goes on to explain in the very next verse, 16, um, yeah, the people say, oh, God forbid that we should serve other gods and da 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 And so basically he, he run down to, what verse was it? Verse 23. He says, now therefore, put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you. Incline your heart unto the Lord your God. He said, look, if you turn away from the Lord, it's going to get bad. So you need to, you got a process of preparation here. He says, cut off the other gods. Get rid of the competition. I, as far as I see, that's the. If I allow myself to get cut off as a branch, as a branch, I'm going to wither. In Psalms, he was very clear to say, "Here's who's going to be blessed." 
But he said, but the ungodly are not so. If I choose a different route, he says, they're going to be blown away by the wind, like shaft blown in the wind. For sure, you're not going to just, well, I just won't have God, I'll just have my own little world. No, he'll crash. I'll be blown away. Here, Joshua's calling them together. He says, look, if you don't serve God, I can tell you what's going to happen. There's, it doesn't work. Nobody's life, not even a heathen's life or the people who serve other God, their life won't work either. Without, the only success route there is is to choose to follow God with all your heart. And so I want to encourage you as a church today, abide, abide, just say I'm going to abide. Every day I'm going to take time to pray. Every day I'm going to take time to read the Word of God. Do I successfully do this every day? There's some days I was really tired and I, I try to tell myself, you know, I want to get up in the morning and read the Word, I want to go to bed with the Word. If I want to have good dreams, I want to be, you know, put some word in my mind, you know, some, put some word in my heart. And there's some days I'm really tired and cross-eyed and I'm like, ah, I'm just trying to make, maybe I'll catch it tomorrow, I'll do double time. And resist the temptation to postpone God. Because he is, here's what it is, he has promised you absolutely will be fruitful if you just abide. And you say, but I don't know how. Look at all the trouble. I got financial problems. I got this going wrong. There's COVID. There's blah, blah, blah. I can, all the things are going wrong. If I'll just abide, he will bring it to pass. Amen. Hebrews is very clear to say that um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, talk about the fact that, you know, you first have to believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If I keep that, that focus, God, you know, whatever my job is today, if I don't get it done today, that's not the world's worst thing. My main job is our relationship. I probably said this last time, and I try to say it almost every time I minister somewhere. I ask the question, what's, what's the greatest commandment in the Bible? Uh, you know, and people usually, greatest commandment in the Bible, anyone want to take a stab at it? To love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. If I can just get that part right, God, today, I want to love you. I'm not going to ignore you. I'm not going to go like, I'm off duty, sorry. I just want to love him with all my heart. If I keep that pure, and how do I keep that pure? Make sure you don't start loving other gods. That's what he told him here, Joshua told him. He says, get rid of those other gods. So if, if you, you've purged those other things out, all the competition, make sure that the, you say, well, I don't have any little idols at home that I bow down to. I don't worship any other gods. Uh, maybe they're not little statues, but there are things that kind of just suck up our time and just drain us, make us weary. It, whatever's catching my attention can become my God. You say, well, that God's not, I'm, this is no fun, I have to, no. The, the easiest life to live is where my focus is on God, and he'll provide everything I need. When I need my rest, he'll provide rest. When I need a blessing, he'll provide the blessing. It's fun to walk with the Lord. He provides everything we need. It's when I think, oh, I need a little bit of what the world says I need. I need my, my special, whatever they're going to sell is. And I start letting these other things become gods in my life. They take up my time. They, they, I start focusing on that more than I focus on the Word. Those gods are the things that will destroy us. And so I don't want to daydream about the world, my past life. What if I'm bored right now? I don't know what else to do. Focus it back on God. If I will abide, we will be more than fruitful. We'll see great things because God desires to do good things for His people. So... In conclusion today, I want to challenge you as a church. How much do you want God to be known in South Dakota? He can make you fruitful. Not that you get all the credit for it, because obviously he's the one that does it. But it's easy. If I had one message, the, the, the takeaway is, it's not hard. It's easy. Just get rid of the competition, the other gods, and just abide. And fruit will come out of your life. 
God will grow things. He'll make things to happen, and he'll come together. Lord Jesus, uh, we're coming to a point right now, Lord, and Joshua did this. He brought the people together. He reminded them of your faithfulness, how powerful you had been. And God, if we stop to start thinking about how many times you've blessed us, how many times you healed us in a crisis, how many times when we didn't have funding, God, you somehow made a way. God, when we were pushing for something and it seemed like there was no possible way to make it happen, you made a way anyway. You've shown yourself faithful over and over and over and over again. Lord, today, you're challenging us to abide to look to you to allow your presence to lift our faith because when my faith is in you God you're able to do everything because faith is what releases you to work and so Lord I'm, I'm not looking at my weakness my inabilities my shortcomings I, I can tell you right now Lord that by ourselves we can do nothing we can't produce fruit apart from you but Lord, you didn't ask me to do something for you. You just wanted our permission so that you could work through us. So Lord, you have great things you want to do. You have mighty things you want to do. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to make our decision that we will abide. In Jesus' name. I wonder if you could just stand together. The question Joshua asked was, Well, basically the statement he made. He says, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And so I want to know, does anybody else want to join that statement to come forward as Joshua would call and says, do you want you and your house to serve the Lord and to abide? Not off, not on. You know where the blessing's at? You know where the curse is going to be at? Do you just want to abide? I wonder if you just want to come forward to say, God, I'd like to renew my commitment to say we're going to abide. We're going to follow. You've got great things to do. You're going to do powerful things. Yes, Lord. Turn your eyes upon the cross And look to Him, you'll never be lost Turn your eyes upon the cross and look to him you'll never be lost I wonder right now if there's just something that is another God in your life you need to cut off. Can't serve two gods. Just to start with step number one, we're going to just ask, say, God, search my heart. Is there something that's allowing me to steal the affection that I need to get rid of? Something that needs to go? Let's just get rid of it right now. Can we do that together? Lord Jesus, we're preparing our hearts right now. We're looking to you because we want your favor and your blessing. But God, you're a jealous God. I can't serve two gods. I can't have two loves. Lord, I want to love you alone, God. And so, Lord, I pray that you search our heart right now. If there's something, even small, that we're hanging on to that becomes a, a, a deterrent, it becomes a tripping factor, God, it becomes something, issue, God. Lord, thank you that you're able to deliver us from that. You are able. To, we can't do it ourselves. But, Lord, we give you permission. Take this other God out of our life. We want to kick it out, God. We do not want to follow it, God. We're asking in Jesus' name that you'd cleanse our hearts, God. Purify us, God. Lord, you said we need to repent. And so, Lord, we turn away from those things that we trusted because we can't trust anything else, God. Nothing else will bring us happiness. Nothing else will bring us satisfaction. Nothing else can bring us prosperity, God. You and you alone, God, is what we're trusting in today. And, Lord, we recognize that. And so, Lord, we give you permission. Take it out, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and we thank you, God. And we're affirming, Lord, our love to follow you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. In Jesus' name we pray.